When people ask James Emmanuel where he's from, he likes to say the Wild West. Perhaps it's because most Parisians have never heard of Alliance Nebraska. But growing up in the 1920s and 30s, Emmanuel lived the life of a young cowboy and farmer. A favorite story is the time he stopped a runaway team of wild horses with his bare hands. They were big horses. And they, they were running right toward me and I had to stand right in front of them. And when they got close enough, I had to leap up and try to grab the reins in their mouths. If I had missed, I would have fallen under their feet. He wasn't trampled, though the horses dragged him and tore the heels off his shoes. Most of his free time was spent in the local library. Reading pushed him to escape the low-frame house beyond the railroad tracks where his parents and six siblings lived. I knew that I would never go back. Something, somehow I knew I would never go back. Because I, maybe I got ideas of how life could be from these novels. And I knew it wasn't the life I had been living. So I kept going eastward. After working a stint at an Illinois junkyard, Emanuel scored high on his civil service exams. He moved to Washington, D.C. and worked as the secretary to General Benjamin O. Davis. At the same time, he began exploring Washington's social circles. I sensed finally that I was living a kind of classical life, you know, from rags to riches, but I didn't have the riches. But I remember the rags, you see. Emmanuel was stationed briefly in the Philippines and then took advantage of the GI Bill to enter Howard University. He received degrees from Northwestern and Columbia, published widely, and taught at the City College of the City University of New York, where Emmanuel fought to introduce the study of black poetry in 1966. He published a landmark study on Langston Hughes and an anthology of African-American verse, Dark Symphony. Meanwhile, Emmanuel drew inspiration from the civil rights movement. In his poem, We Shall Overcome, A Smile for the 1960s, Emmanuel juxtaposes images of peace and war, decrying the assassination of black leaders. But the song was beautiful. To us, every time, it was lovely. Like the uncut pages of a book of dreams, the best of the century pushed aside. In 1983, Emmanuel's son James Jr. committed suicide after he was brutally beaten by three police officers. Emmanuel wrote the poem Deadly James for all the victims of police brutality, though he says he can't bring himself to read it alone, much less in public. It's the only poem I ever wrote with tears in my eyes. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. That incident led him to quit his teaching post and pack up for France but he found that racism also existed there, too. The poem after the poetry reading, Black, recounts a Toulouse student telling Emmanuel he was not black enough. Usually when people talk about a black poet, they have in mind, probably, their own idea of what a black poet should be writing. Now, I detest this idea. Emmanuel was not always so conscious of racial conflict. Growing up in Alliance, he says he didn't see many black people and his mother did not talk about race. His distaste for powerful institutions came later in life. I would have been a revolutionary, definitely, if I had been born in a different place. That attitude became apparent in tribute poems to Emmett Till, Malcolm X, and Pennsylvania death row inmate Mumia Abu-Jamal. But poet and essayist Dan Schneider says Emmanuel should not simply be considered a political poet. Emmanuel, his, his political aspects in his poetry uh, come secondarily to the art, and that's the difference between him and, say, a lot of black power poets or a lot of lesbian poets or a lot of poets that are against nuclear war or this. Uh, he doesn't write bumper stickers. He writes poetry. In 1992, Emmanuel created a new literary genre. He calls it jazz and blues haiku, and he adopts certain musicians' styles and rhythms. This is Earl Garner. Splash elegant notes, slant wise leap one another. Tic tac toes, brother. Emmanuel says jazz attracts him as a subject because great music, like poetry, lifts the listener out of his present self. Life would be very dull if you couldn't be carried away to some other place. Boy, it would be terrible. You'd be stuck with your own flesh every minute of the day.
In recent years, Emmanuel has taken to touring Europe and Africa with a saxophonist. Emmanuel ends his 2001 autobiography, The Force and the Reckoning, with the thought that the promised land just beyond his reach is the creation of a poetic masterpiece. For his 85th birthday this June, friends and collaborators of James Emmanuel plan to release a privately printed collection of his poems. Only a handful will be published. For NET Radio News, I'm Avishai Ar